Man, this looks like a broken fence. Oh, God. Yeah, man. Come here, chicken. Come here, I'm gonna get... Well, hey, hey, don't mind me. I'm just looking for a little dinner. Won't you come in? Come here, little chicken. Got me a chicken, they need to fix their fence. <laughs> What's up, Caddy Wampus crew? It's Jason, and welcome to Caddy Wampus Acres. By the end of this video, you are going to be able to set up your own large chicken run so you can protect your chickens and those eggs. Let's get into it. If you can see back behind me here, got a broken fence that was broken during storm or hurricane Zeta, whatever it's called, and we're gonna take care of it today. Basically, what happened is the post rotted off right at ground level, probably from water. We need to get over here and fix it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to T-post instead of wooden posts. And we're gonna use welded wire fence. We got 100 feet of six foot tall welded wire fence. And I got seven foot tall um, T-posts. So we're gonna switch to those because those won't ever rot. If you have any T-posts, you know that they go good forever. Who is this? This is one of our uh, dark Brahmas here. We're new to Brahmas. Um, if you don't know much about Brahmas, uh, they are a breed that have feathered feet and they're a very large uh, breed as well. Probably what we're gonna do is, instead of tearing the fence down, then building a new one, we're probably gonna build the new one um, maybe about a foot away. And from that point, we will pull the old one down because we gotta let these chickens get in because some of them are out as well. So. Sound like a plan? Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into it. So here's what we'll be using today. Um, we have a T-post puller. If you have not ever used one of these, these are very nice. We have some T-posts back there that are old and they're short ones. So uh, we're gonna probably have to pull some of those. So definitely need one of those. We got a T-post driver, which we use quite a bit. And I use these. Um, these are like little miniature bolt cutters. They work really, really good for the welded wire fencing, so I really like that. Got about a dozen uh, seven-foot T-posts, so that's what we'll be using. If you can see this row of T-posts, that's actually where I'm going to set the new T-posts. not doing anything fancy. I'm not setting lines and stuff. And the nice thing about the welded wire fence opposed to woven wire is that I don't have to stretch it. Stretching fence stinks, and I don't want to do that today. So um, this was the most economical way that I could think to do this okay this is how these work lock up under one of these and this has been in here for a long time and our goal is to just eeks. and if you have an issue you get that closer pull we're gonna have to break just like that this out and it sort of ratchets back down. It's like that. Now it's time to start setting the new post. I do want to take a second to say thank you to our Caddy Wampus crew and all of our subscribers. We really appreciate your support. If you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And it's not important at all unless you hit that bell notification so you can keep up to date with everything we're doing here on the farm. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Also, please remember to share these videos on all of your social media platforms. Caddy Wampus Acres is on Instagram. Uh, we are now on Facebook. We are also on Parlor. So please check us out on those other social media sites. Add us, follow us, whatever the case may be. Let's get back into it. Alrighty, drive the first one. are typically pretty easy unless you get into some roots which we definitely have some roots over here but uh, they're still a lot faster than digging trust me and I boy I do not like digging so if you're putting up a large chicken run fence hopefully this video will help you and uh, you'll get to see how well it works for us 
I'm going to show you why we have this large chicken run instead of doing a full free range like we used to do. See them? All those chickens? Well, back there, not only is there chickens, there's foxes, coyotes, raccoons, skunks, hawks, everything else. I've actually heard a hawk uh, yelling and screaming since I've been out here. So chicken, these chickens have a lot of predators. <laughs> they don't have to be exactly in line for what we're doing. And the side to side strength um, of them going this way does not matter nearly as much for chickens as it does for um, goats. It will keep predators out, the predators that we're gonna get, it will keep the chickens in. This is two inch by four inch welded wire fence. This is red brand. Um, we are not sponsored by anybody, so we can always give honest opinions. We do love red band fence. This is what we've used any place where we've used um, the woven fence. We definitely always use red brand. I suggest it highly for goats. And then we have used it over here previously for the other chicken area. Um, they just make really high quality fence. So when you buy T-Post from Tractor Supply, they give you a bag of uh, T-Post clips. Uh, you, know, you get like five T-Post clips per. So we got a bunch of those. This is a T-Post clip bender. This one's a pretty simple one. I also have an articulating one, which I'm not gonna use today, mainly because I cannot find it. Welded wire fence is good for animals that don't test your fencing. Goats, sheep, um, I would always recommend, and even pigs, um, they're gonna test your fence a little bit. So pigs, I would recommend electric or panels. A lot of times, once you train a horse, this is good and this will keep out most of your predators for most of your animals. For those of you who don't know, I have a love-hate relationship with these uh, little staples. We always need them because they are inexpensive, um, these little galvanized staples, but uh, round staple, rounded head of hammer, they don't work that great. This is the, the clips, how they look right here. There's like a long end and, and a short end. Okay, so the easiest way to do these, and you can spread them out as much as you want. Take this little side, go around the back, hook it around your fence, and that gives you a little, um, little guy here and you can take that and stick your tool right in there and bend it up around and that typically works that's how you end up looks pretty good all right we got a good start here we got a corner going we'll just move on down the line here This is what we're trying to accomplish right here. This is your first time using T-Post. This, we can show you how to use the clips. The way we do it, I'm sure there's a million ways to use them, but this is how we do it. Hook around the back, take the short end, hook around there, which leaves you, leaves you this right here. We take this end of this, put it through there, and bend it up and around. I go super tight, so it sort of draws the fence in. And I take the little holes, get up as far as I can on it, and bend it around like that. And you can see, nice and tight. So that's what we end up with. Well, thanks a lot to Daylight Savings Time. We have to try and finish up here pretty quick because we are running out of light. For the night, we got all the chickens in. It's sort of that time of night. It's getting sort of dim. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna terminate this fence at this post, because then the chickens really can't get out. There's one walking up and down this little one foot row, but I think she will go back in. <coughs> Okay, we've secured the fence to all the posts and including this last post here, which I um, used the staple basically on every single rung on this one. And I did want to mention something that a lot of you will probably want to do, 
but I'm not going to do in this particular case. I have some other ideas. If you have a smaller chicken run, specifically if you're trying to protect your chickens um, in a high, heavy predator area, for digging predators, it's always a good idea to take some hardware cloth and uh, attach it and bury it at the bottom of your fence right along this area and come out about, I'd say about 12 inches or so. So when as soon as the digging predators start to dig under there, they get caught in the fence and they realize they aren't getting in. So if you look behind me here, you can see I've bent over the top of the fence. This is going to be so I can attach the overhead netting to the fence a little bit easier, probably with some zip ties. It also adds a little bit of rigidity to the um, fence as well. I'm gonna put a link to this netting that we use up on top here. And one, one issue you can see we have is collecting uh, leaves and debris on top. What I've done is I've used these poles, which are actually 10 foot poles for chain link fence. A buddy of mine gave them to me. You just use something with a larger diameter on the top of it and you can uh, raise up and basically create a uh, tent or like a big top effect. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I try and get it sort of level. Best I can do, I guess. But it doesn't need to, it's chickens after all. It doesn't need to be perfectly level, but I'll sort of set myself up here and then just push it into the ground like that. And now we have a tent effect. We need to take down this wooden fence. And I think I have the right tool in mind for taking down this fence. Well, I quickly need to take down this old fence. I don't always cut up random things with a chainsaw, but when I do, I use the Echo Timberwolf. I'm not sponsored, but boy can win. All right, now that I've cleared some space, I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching the overhead netting to our fence that we just put up. Um, I'll show you this, if you can see this here. Be careful in what you get. I'll put a link to this down below, but this is actually like a, um, a little bit thinner than what you find in a batting cage. Um, this is not that plastic stuff. The plastic stuff stinks. It is terrible, it hangs up on itself. This stuff is a lot stronger, a lot easier to use. And there's certainly no magic formula to attaching this. I'm just gonna use some small zip ties and just go through and attach it to where I bend it over at. All right, so as you can see, there's nothing special to this. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and we'll catch up with you in a minute. All righty. Well, we finished zip tying this. Let me take you up front and show you the whole deal. We've completed our remake, remodel, reboot, whatever you wanna call it, of our chicken fence, uh, which is updated our uh, chicken run out here. And this is what we use this large, large area to keep our chickens safe from mainly aerial predators, but all kinds of predators. We have a lot of aerial predators here in Georgia. So just to recap, we have welded wire fence along the sides held up by T-posts. Some are wooden posts, but the wooden posts tend to not last very long. We use this uh, bird netting up above. The bird netting, I will put a link down to Amazon uh, down below. We used these um, 10 foot posts for a chain link fence with a bucket or something to hold up the, the netting on top. Uh, you can use anything. I think 10 feet's a good height because then it sort of brings you up in the middle. So that's my suggestion. We have um, a couple gutter feeders that we use, plastic gutters that we feed in. We also, if you see right down there, it's a feeder that I built. I'm probably gonna relocate that. And then this leads right to our coop. Our coop is right back there. That's where all the chickens go in tonight. That one fits about 80, 90 chickens. I think we currently have about 60 or so, 50, 60. Um, and then our nesting boxes are in there. We have a small run um, just in case we were a little bit late getting up in the morning. That was actually the first area that I built before we have this massive area and before we let them free range and all that stuff. 
And I'll say one more time, just in case you haven't seen our other videos, the reason that we do not free range is because of predators and to protect the chickens and to protect our garden. We built the enclosed garden and um, that was to keep the chickens out of the garden.